I'm going to start off this next video with compost tea, this being part two of the video. Just, man, this stuff has been really powerful. I'll have to go to the front to show you the results, but I try and use, once I had a finished compost, I then started using the finished compost tea in a little watering bucket, you know, just over here. And I pour it onto the plants, and I try to do it during the night, and so that I just sprinkle the the rain, the rainwater, or the sorry, not the rainwater, the compost tea made with rainwater, and the finished compost from the compost pile that you saw in the previous video. And I use it to just sprinkle it on all the plants. And so what I've really noticed is the plant leaves and the plants just seem to be doing a lot better. Just incredible growth on them. In addition to like bigger leaves, they seem to be hardier and more vigorous. And yeah, just gonna close this up right now. You know, just a little five gallon bucket with a little aquarium aerator. And that, the artichoke just seemed to explode. I mean, its growth just got huge. And I don't think it's a, it's not a good controlled experiment, but in addition to the monsoon rains, it was also getting in the compost tea and its size just got immense and it was just putting out tremendous amounts of growth. Yeah, I just wanted to show you the effects of the compost tea in that this is a first year chestnut tree that I planted just here and it has a really hard time surviving in this environment. So it was also really damaged by a bad hailstorm that kind of shredded the corn plants in the back and damaged almost everything. So here's the early growth. I mean, early on in the year, you can see how small the leaves were. And then just after I started putting on the compost tea and the monsoon rains hit, I mean, the leaves just exploded and now they're just huge and so I just also want to show you the same thing on this tree this is also a Chinese chestnut and going back to the early part of the year you can see just how small the leaves were and then as soon as I started using the compost tea the leaves just got immense this is also in addition to the monsoon rain so I mean you can see like just the early early part of the year when I didn't have the compost tea and wasn't getting the rains and then later when it started getting the compost tea and the monsoon rains and just the leaf size exploded and that's just on the entire thing you know again it had some pretty had pretty bad hail damage that's why all the brown and it got really destroyed and there's hail damage onto the tree and everything but then monsoon rains and the compost tea and it just really came back and a lot of impressive growth so, just want to talk to you about the front yard. So, yeah, those Jerusalem artichokes over there, just really impressive. Barely gave them any water, and now they're starting to really blossom out now, showing the leaves. Volunteer mimosa tree, chestnut tree, you know, and this is rock mulch. It was all here pre-existing. More volunteer plants down there, grasses, uh, gypsum weed mimosa tree and I'm gonna just keep the mimosa trees and use them as nitrogen fixers and feeders to keep this entire area revitalized because I'm not able to put down compost or fertilizer in this area so I'm gonna just use those mimosa trees as volunteer plants slash and just occasionally trim them and chop them and drop them and keep them feeding this area so another nice feature was just this area right here in that there was already presently kind of a natural like little swale. So I uh, finished another water rack to harvest the rainwater. I'll just show you real quick. I haven't done a video on this one, but it's just a completely a different design in that I used two by sixes. Two by sixes instead of four by fours to capture the rainwater. And you know just immediately the overflow actually kind of goes over to that natural swale so if there is any additional water it gets again s slowed down out into that natural swale spread out and then trying to sink it as much as possible into that area so I'm hoping that it does well I mean it was working last night during the heavy monsoon rains when it was getting full yeah just a quick video the rainwater harvest system. And during any any storm, this is about a 500 gallon system. It becomes full, and then I just use it, you know, during the days when there's no rain. And 
Yeah, you can see that there are leaks, you know, and that even with some of the... I tried to set it up really well and caulk everything and seal it. And so, I mean, there's mostly no leaks on the parts because I've now learned how to fix them, fix the, se fix the leaks, so... And I've done some better engineering and changing these parts instead of using one and a half to keep it at two, two inches, so... Yeah, on the new system, there's hardly any leaks there up at the top. But yeah, I mean, eventually stuff does leak, and so the bucket's catching the, the drips, and I periodically empty them. So over time, I'm going to fix those, work those out, get rid of them. But yeah, in this area, you know, trying to keep the amount of water down so that there's no growth in this area, because I don't want it to attract termites and stuff like that, and trying to keep the water out of this area. So, yeah. Lastly, I just wanted to mention some of the animals that I've seen appearing in that. Over in the compost pile, tons of cockroaches, uh, pill bugs, uh, roly polies, worms, all sorts of animals. There's tons of lizards that patrol this wall. Ants now come up and down here. They like will either come from the neighbor's yard or they'll come from this large ant colony over there. So they'll have tons of lizards in this area, you know, hanging out looking for ants. Uh, bees, wasps, birds, checking out. And then yesterday I even saw a roadrunner. Roadrunner was trying to chase all my lizards. And so, yeah, I think there's like maybe five or six different lizards that I can readily identify as being different that live in this area. So I think that roadrunner was after him. And let's see here. Yeah, I'll occasionally see quite a few worms, wasps, yeah, ants. Let's see here. I think that's all the animals that have come back to this area. So yeah, had a little pause, sorry about that. My the memory card got full. But yeah, in addition to the animals that I was speaking about, there's a large ant colony, you know, different several different types of ants and spiders. Yes. That there's now several different species of spiders that I've seen here. You know, I've seen black widows unfortunately. But they're doing their job. Uh, Daddy long legs, red butted spiders, and a bunch of other spiders. And earlier in the season, I saw praying mantises, but they—I don't think they made it all the way through. So hopefully, they come back. Uh, and I believe that's all the animals. So I mean, just this is the progress on the first year permaculture experiment. So yeah, I'm just gonna keep it going to see if it actually you know, does the trick. But I mean, so far it looks to be working. You know, I'm impressed with the results thus far. I'm going to be trying to put in some goji berries, you know, out in the front. Also some mint plants if they, the gojis and the mints make it through the winter. Let's see how that goes. The hugo pots, hmm, so so on. And yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please comment, ask me any questions. I'm still pretty novice in this and yeah. Hope to continue these videos, but this will probably be the last one for the season unless I make some serious observations during the the late fall or winter.